Hi guys, and welcome to 42101. Um, we're going to start with a little bit of a, a lecture about maps, and not the kind of maps you're thinking about. Uh, maps, M-A-P-S, that's a heuristic that explains how someone can write different kinds of documents in different situations for different audiences. Uh, it's something I use for all kinds of writing classes, uh, from freshman composition all the way up to senior level technical writing and beyond. So this should be useful to you as you walk into this class and for other writing classes if you are not uh, graduating. So as I mentioned before, MAPS is an acronym. It stands for Mode, Audience, Purpose, and Situation. Um, and sometimes, as you can see here in this, this other little MAPS thing, we throw in two M's and that's for media. So I'm going to let you decide if you want to throw that M-M-A-P-S or just keep it simple at MAPS. Um, so we uh, normally don't, don't love acronyms um, that kind of get in the way they irritate us and so on. But this one's pretty easy, so I think we should keep it around. Uh, helps us to remember, and I'll refer to it often in this particular class for all kinds of writing situations. Um, and it's, it just helps you to uh, think through and make it simple. Um, all right, so M, mode. So we're just going to stick with the M part of this. I'll let you think through the media um, because that's something that uh, is relevant to you guys, right? What kind of media? But I want you to just kind of throw that in the back of your head. M stands for mode. Um, now, what kind of writing is it, right? Um, we got, that includes something about the conventions for the type of writing. Uh, if you think about a convention, okay, we're not talking about a convention where you go and you, you, you take a look at it. We're talking about the kind of conventions that are the rules, right? What are the standards by which we follow uh, for a particular type of writing, an X document. Um, so, and here's, there's some expected attributes to a particular type of writing that you all recognize, right? Um, so I'm going to give you some examples. Um, the first is going to be a business letter. And I'm going to go over here to our basic business letter. I'm using uh, Purdue Owl, which is uh, a place that we go for just a darn near everything. Um, so a basic business letter, when you see a basic business letter, we have here, right, the address, the salutation, the body, the closing. You're going to have to deal with all these ads whenever you use this, but um, that's the way the internet is, right? So we have here a specific kind of font. So let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you. Well, maybe we can't make it a little bigger, but when when we're talking about a business letter, when I when I don't even read something, when I just see it come across my desk or come up on my computer, I know what a business letter looks like, right? I know the mode. I can see up here, you know, the address, the date, your address, my address, and then I can see that we have block style, um, and it looks to me like this particular letter, even though I can't even read it because it's so small is um, valid, right? It's an, I can recognize the mode of this particular thing. I can see down here that somebody has signed it um, and that's uh, the, the form of a business letter that we expect. Um, now, the second example I'm going to give you is one that you're familiar with and probably ready to not be familiar with. And that is sort of a document, uh, a paper. And I've chosen to use APA here just so you can see what one might look like. You know, when I see an APA paper, again, even though it's small, I look for the fact that the first page has, a, there's a, you know, there's this little page that says, here's my, my cover page. Um, and then I look to see um, what is on the next thing. Do, does a, an APA paper have a, a similar feel to an MLA? Sure, but again, it's a little bit different, right? Um, in other classes, you might have learned even, even other types of formats or modes, and that would be something like IEEE, okay? So that's another thing that we can take a look at um, as a sample, right? An APA paper. Um, a third one that you might find as an example is a sample memo. This one's going to be more friendly to us here. All right, so here's a memo, and you can always recognize a memo, whether it's email or uh, in your mailbox physically, because they all look the same. We have a to, from, date, subject. Um, notice that there are headings here. There are bullet points, and they're usually a page, maybe a little longer than a page long, right? Memos um, look like a specific thing. 
We expect them to feel the, the same way. We expect them to purvey information in a particularly fast way. And if they don't, then we get upset, right? Okay, so mode is important. Um, another one is a proposal. A proposal here, this is an example of an academic proposal. Um, you might have uh, a non-academic proposal in, in another type of class or when you go out to the work world. Proposals have a similar feel, right? I should see bullet points again. This is a little, it's similar to a memo, but it's longer usually. This one is eight pages long. I'm going to see headings. I'm going to see easy to skim, easy to read stuff. I'm going to look through it. And I'm going to expect that at the top here, it says something about being a proposal, right? Probably at the very end, if you go to the very end, I'm going to see some sort of uh, references to, you know, what am I doing, All right? What did I, where did I get this information? How did it, how did I come by it? Did I do it myself? Did I put together a study? Do I have sources? Blah, blah, blah. Um, another one, a resume. Of course, I picked a resume because you guys are just about ready to go use them if you haven't used them already. Um, I'm going to pick, uh, let's pick a skills resume here. I'm just looking at samples so you can see a sample one. Um, obviously, resumes look different. Um, again, looking at a very tiny one isn't a bad idea because um, you should be able to tell whether something is good or not, even if it's very small, just by being able to like look at this real quickly and go, can I, can I skim this really fast? Can I see headings? Yeah, even at this small, I can see professional education, major related goals, skills, training, work, whatever the headings are, I can see them, right? Um, again, it's just this is the M, it's for mode. Um, now, the next the one, next one that we have, let's go back over here to our to our look at our schematic, right? Our, our um, map, as it were. Um, the next one is going to be the A, and that's for audience. Um, audience refers to whomever it is that you're writing to, of course. It could be a single person, it could be a client, it could be a customer, it could be a large body of persons, uh, like you could be writing to all first year students at, at Purdue, Fort Wayne. Um, if you know about your intended audience, you're going to make very different decisions about your writing. Um, how you write is based upon what that audience needs, correct? Uh, so it's really important to think about this ahead of time. Um, so again, there's some types of audiences that you might be writing a business letter, right? We talked about the business letter. Um, Maybe you're talking about a, a customer who's unhappy or complaining, right? That audience is going to feel really different. So I have to think about it. I have to think, okay, what's my mode? Business letter, what's my audience? Complaining customer or happy customer. Those are going to be two different things, right? Um, if you're taking uh, a second one and you're writing that academic one, you're maybe talking to a professor, okay? Or if you're writing a proposal, maybe it's to a um, technical writing class or to a boss at a, at a work. Um, a resume, of course, is going to a prospective employer, probably, right? But each of those audiences want something different, feel something different, and you have to appeal to them. It's important to put yourself in their shoes, right? Um, the and, and probably we can assume that almost all of these particular audiences are in a hurry, uh, overloaded, very busy, maybe even grouchy. Um, and you, so you want to be particularly efficient and providing your information to them um, you don't want wordiness, right? You don't want uh, hard to follow stuff. You don't want things that are um, hard to figure out. Where is that? Or how am I supposed to find this, right? You want to adapt your writing to those particularly grouchy people in different ways. Um, we want to think about things like, uh, is this formal or informal? How am I going to address these particular people? Um, and also, I want, to f I want my prose to be crisp, efficient, well edited, organized, maybe even include a diagram so that I, they can see what I'm talking about. We want nothing that's sloppy. We want nothing that has a lot of extra uh, extraneous stuff around it, right? All right, so that's mode. We have audience. The third one is P for purpose, right? What is the purpose of this particular document and to that particular audience? Um, what are you hoping to accomplish? What's the reason um, that we're doing this whole thing again? So we're, again, we're looking back at our samples. We're thinking about what, you know, who are these people that I'm talking about? What's my purpose? Um, am I answering a question? Am I resolving an issue? Uh, but also keeping them as a customer, that's important to think about, right? That's a big deal. Um, an academic out, uh, essay that goes to a grouchy professor who's graded a whole stack of them, I need to know uh, what's my purpose in talking to that person. Uh, I want to show that I've thoroughly researched, that I know what I'm talking about, right? Um, 
I want to make sure that it shows um, I didn't use <laughs> artificial intelligence, AI. That's a new thing. Um, how do we do that, right? That's important too. Um, the purpose is directly tied to the kind of writing. Um, and that person that I'm talking to, that audience that I'm talking to. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the next thing. Oh, let's go back to the S. The end of this maps, mode, audience, purpose, and situation. The situation sometimes means the context or the special details that go into this particular item that I'm writing. Um, might be my situation, like where am I? What am I doing? Who am I? Um, it can talk about things like, um, you know, again, that maybe we're talking that business letter. That's the mode. Um, the audience maybe is that complaining customer. Uh, maybe they the situation is that they've complained before, right? So maybe the, they've complained before and maybe they haven't been right. Maybe this time around, they're right. And so <laughs> this time around, that context is really important because, oh, I have to yeah, find a way to eat a little crow, say I'm really sorry, but still be polite. So resolve the situation and keep them as a customer. That's important to know the situation. It's uh, the situation throws the wrench in things, right? Okay, the first three we can usually figure out. The situation, sometimes it's a little more difficult. Um, the academic essay, say your your um, history professor may or may not be grouchy, of course, um, but you're writing the entire document the night before it's due, you know, because some of you would do that. Um, you're on Red Bull and Cheetos, and you're writing it all the right before, and it changes the way you write, or you've, you're tempted by using you know, something that is going to write it for you. Oh, that's not going to work as well, right? You might think that it does. A lot of you think that that's a great way to work. Trust me, it is not. And uh, we know when you do that, uh, we could tell. Um, the, it might be good for a first draft, though. It might be great for a first draft. I, I would agree with that. But it's not going to be the best. And you can improve it by going back and re revising, right? Um, so that's that could be one situation. Um, another situation, maybe you're talking to your supervisor at work, you've got you've gotten the job, um, but then you've forgotten, oh no, I forgot where that is and I, I've asked before and they told me before, now I have to figure out how to ask again politely and say, hey, you know, sorry, I'm an idiot, but you don't want to you know, do it in such a way that makes you look too bad, right? Okay, so situations are important to know how it works and what is going on when you're talking about it. So again, Mode, audience, purpose, situation. These are all things that we have to know. And I'll often ask you to keep those things in mind. I'll, sometimes I'll even say things like uh, do the maps for a document. Always do the maps. Um, whether you are an English major or an engineer, um, you should always think, sit down and think, how can I do the maps? Because it's going to help you be more efficient. It's going to help your document be better. Um, and uh, that's all I'm going to talk to you about. If you need to uh, ask me any questions, you can always email me at b-e-n-y-o-u-s-s -S at p-f-w dot e-d-u. And that's all for today. And thanks for listening, guys.